And welcome to Desk with Lady Ada. Hey everybody, and welcome to a Sunday night Desk with Lady Ada. We're going to be doing some PCB uh, panelization and ordering tonight. Thought that's that's a good Sunday night cleanup project. What do you think? Most people I know spend their Sundays making PCBs and sending them off. That's right. I only know one person right now. That's well, yeah, and we're stuck together. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so that's what we're going to be doing, and I have a panel of PCBs that I have to send out. Um, when I order prototypes, I tend to order, you know, five to ten different prototypes at the same time. I kind of bundle them together instead of ordering them one by one. I don't know. That's just my style. And um, lately, I've actually been using JLC PCB. Um, and Naomi Wu, who did a video for us about this thermal scanner, um, asked us if we use JLC PCB. And I said, yeah, I use them all the time for my prototypes. And she said, cool. Uh, can you do a video about that? And we're like, yeah, of course. So this is a video about how I use EagleCAD to panelize a bunch of prototypes and send them to JLC PCB and get a stencil as well. So we want to do this thing? Yeah, how do you want to start? You want to start from the design process on your computer? Do you want to show something? Well, let me overhead? actually show the overhead because I think this could be interesting. So one of the reasons I like to use um, Gold Phoenix and JLC PCB for prototypes is that you get fully routed and um, plated, silk screened and masked prototypes. So uh, in this case, uh, you even get two side silk screen, you get unusual um, routes. So this is like in a, a weird, you know, looking um, layout because it's got like this, you know, just like Arduino cut out and then there's this little notch here and you've got these plated um, through hole uh, slots here and here for the USB and for the power um, and sometimes the PCBs are small and they're rounded and sometimes when you get prototype PCBs like you don't get them like fully routed out um, and another thing that's really nice is they come like individually packed so this is a panel I made um, a while ago Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know if there's questions as you go along. But yeah. uh, uh, I want to, you know, people know this service, mm -hmm. and uh, the comment so far is this is a great price. The pricing is good. The pricing is good. People like these. The, the pricing is quite good, and you get them pretty fast. And especially what I like is you can get a metal stencil as well, um, and this helps a lot. So, for example, when you're doing a project like this, um, this is a um, RT1011 uh, with ESP32, um, you know, having a stencil. You can see that the panel has multiple stencils on it. Um, and I'll just quickly line this up and I'll take my next question. Hold well, on. these are statements. Oh, yeah. Um, Old Crow says, I just got some boards from them. Milled slots for the win. Yeah, for the win. So here you can see, um, you know, the, the stencil is um, perfect. They use the cream layer. And I'll show you how to check that out to make sure you, you, you've got that. Uh, layer on and then it just makes um, you know you put some solder paste on you squeegee it over and then just place all the parts in hot air it's much 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 faster than soldering by hand Matt says I've got my order from JLPCB on its way right now so wow. so this is a random sampling we didn't plan this I did no, not plan this no one no one knew that we were gonna do this tonight Naomi we didn't know that we were gonna do this tonight no one knew we were gonna do this tonight so you know sometimes we were asked by like large companies or smaller companies or um, the people who write trend reports or things, and they say, well, what's going on? And we were saying, you know, the folks from um, JLPCB, that's something to look after because I'm noticing the makers are using it, the pro engineers are using them. And so um, if anyone wants to do market research, I don't have time, I'm dealing with a pandemic over here, um, but look at the comments on these videos and look at our community and see what they're doing. What our community is doing now is what a lot of people will be doing later. And I want to thank Naomi, um, for not only helping us out, um, by the way, she's been very helpful helping New York, us specifically, figure out some stuff that we need to do to have safe workplaces and more. Yeah. So I want to do a shout out for Naomi. But um, most of all, that's cool if you have good experiences with this company, post them up so they know and for the community as well. Yeah, if, you're order, you. if you want to order one-offs or you want to order from the U.S. and get them really fast, Oshpark is going to get these beautiful purple PCBs. But when I order like a really large number of PCBs, and I, mean, you know, I don't need them to come from the U.S., um, you take a little bit longer maybe, uh, GLC PCB is great. So let's go to my computer. I'm done with the overhead. So I have a list I collect of um, PCBs that I worked on recently that I would like to panelize together. Uh, to make this prototype panel. And again, I try to do a couple at a time. 
So let me grab my, change the resolution so everything kind of moved around a lot. Um, okay, so let's uh, start grabbing these PCBs and we'll make a panel. I'll show you how to do, I do a panel. Now you can panelize the Gerbers after the fact, but I kind of prefer to panelize them in Eagle and then generate the Gerbers at once. I, I've had like iffy luck with uh, Gerber mergers. Like sometimes they work, but sometimes they have like weird shapes. It's like not so great. And also it's hard to like visualize it because you're just like typing into it. Um, Gerber mergers sounds Gerber like mergers. a fantastic third album. Yeah. All right, so let's do this uh, OLED 128x64 Featherwing first. So under dev boards and Featherwings. Um, okay. So I like to uh, put revisions in for which revision I'm running. So you see like a bunch of these are new and this one is a second revision. First revision, I got the pitch of the OLED wrong, which uh, you know what happens. So, okay. So I opened up an Eagle. So then the next thing you wanna do is just make sure you have, um, you know, the first sets of layers on. Cause don't forget your T place, B place, T origins, B origins. Once in a while I turn off like the bottom layer cause I'm like doing stuff. But then what happens is um, I forget to turn it back on when I copy the board over. I also, oh, I can't really do it easily because I'm at 720p, which is like super small. So let's go over here. So I'll do an ERC. I'll check it out. This looks fine. One person had a very honest comment. I, I appreciate this. Yeah. They said they've never had a bad experience with JLPC. Um, they've had boards that didn't work, but it was their own design problem, not yeah. their build problem. You know, I'll tell you why I admire that. Because as, as a company that sends out millions of products, sometimes people will blame the product, and sometimes that is true. But often it might be they did something, and I like it when people are honest, like, oh, this didn't work out from the board house. It's my design mistake. They didn't say, oh, you guys suck, you know, uh, whatever PCB house. Because, you know, that's part of the engineering process is, getting boards Learning. that don't yeah. work and your design might need another revision. Like, I don't know what's wrong with this like, this board. I gotta figure it out. Like, I tried to bring it up and it doesn't work. I'll figure it out. I always do. It's just like, yeah. you know, until you know, you know. Okay, so for the first PCB, actually what I do is I just save it to the desktop and I'll call this, um, I'll call this panel Naomi. I like to give it a unique name um, because then I can reference it um, later when I, like, I place my order. So I don't use dates, I actually use names. Uh, names. Um, okay, so then what I do is actually I quit Eagle. Just what you, you wouldn't think I would do. And then on the desktop, I delete the um, schematic file. Bye. And then I reopen the board file. So that severs the connection. Like you can't like delete the schematic, otherwise it's like really messy. So now I have just the, the PCB here. Um, and I can run uh, DRC and there's nothing to DRC, I do a rat's nest, nothing to do, great. So now I can move on to the next PCB. So the first one's weird because you do this like save as. The next one is gonna be this H HT20 Rev A. So let's go to breakout board sensors HT20 Rev A. Now I get time to like, I just clean up my Eagle files, open up, so now I see I have two windows open. I actually don't know if you can do this in a Mac. I've heard that like you can't have two Eagle windows open, which is like really weird. But thankfully I'm, I'm on Windows so I can do that. Um, I check that all my layers are on. I run ERC, nothing weird. I run the DRC, nothing, great. This is ready to go. Um, and then at the top I type in cut after I select everything, and then I control right click to select the group and cut. Yeah, that's, there's probably a better way of doing it now since they've updated the UI, but that's how I do it. And over here, I um, click on paste, and then I kind of like, I put it like there. You wanna give yourself a little bit of room. Give them some room to route out the board. So like maybe 0.1 inch or so, but you can put it pretty close. One thing I've noticed is that um, sometimes when you paste multiple boards in on like one BRD in Eagle, if you run DRC, yeah, it's like, hi, you have like a bazillion wire stubs. It's, it's something about the pasting and it gets a little weirded out. You can ignore that. Um, 
what you do is after you place everything, close the file, save it, and reopen it, and the wire stubs go away. It's something that when you the file gets reloaded, it's fine. All right, so moving on. So um, we'll do a teeny logic friend. Next, that's under dev boards, teeny logic friend. This is the board that we designed while Scott did um, a logic analyzer stream a couple weeks ago. So same as before, you do ERC, these are fine. You do the DRC. Oh, got a clearance issue here. Let's fix this wall. Yeah, we're... so a couple things. Lots of fans of uh, Oshpark. And also, someone noticed that uh, we got to activate Windows on this computer. The reason is... Actually... The reason is... I have a new computer. That's <laughs> yeah. why. So, uh, and shout out to... Was it Falcon? That's who... Falcon uh, Northwest. For Falcon Northwest. The choice of Lady Ada. So, I got a new computer, and I have to, like, do the thing where I, like, reactivate it. Because, like, the motherboard changed. So, Windows is just like, yeah. what are you doing? But I'll deal with that next yeah. week. It's, it turns out it's not as easy. It might actually be cheaper if I just buy another Windows 10 license. But yeah, um, whatever. it's definitely paid for. Don't worry about it. I was on the phone for like an hour today trying to agree. Okay. So, um, Teeny Logic Friend. Um, there's no layers here, so I can ignore those. I've got all the layers on that oh, I need. To make a whole panel like this, you need Eagle Premium. Is that correct? Um, I think it depends on the size. If it's less than a Euro card, you might not. I, I mean, I, I make PCBs. If you're making this many prototypes, you're probably doing this for business. You can afford to pay whatever is the, is the premium rate. All right, so here's another PCB. Rat's nest, great. Okay, so then we can uh, close our old windows. Someone says you can open Eagle from the Mac terminal for a second instance. Ooh, good trick. All right, next up, the NPM 3610. This will power supply chip so let's go to development batteries and power npm this is cute this is an all-in-one little um buck converter and like all it needs is like two capacitors it's got the inductor built in i thought this is kind of cute i've seen this on like some arduino boards and i was like this is an interesting chip question does uh JLPCB charge extra for panels with different designs? They do, and I'll show you how to do that step when I get there. Cool. Just hang out. Okay, we're, so we're gonna hang out. I'm just gonna continue to copy and paste my PCBs. Make a little puzzle. Let's see, now we've got four so far. Let's do we've got a matrix feather wing, oops, and the ST25 DV. So let's go to the SC25DV. I think I put them under EEPROMs. Maybe? No. I put it under RFID. Yeah. Okay, check my, oh, see I didn't have the bottom origins and panel on. And uh, sorry, that place in origin, so I need to do that. Okay, one thing that someone says. Yeah. JLPCV engineers check over things before sending it through the process. Don't expect them to design your PCB, but they have caught some weird things that a person submitted. Yeah, if you're doing something weird, like if you don't have, well, I mean, sometimes they'll be like, did you really mean to do what you did here? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, but if you, like your paste layer doesn't line up right or your mask, so if you mask something over, they, they do catch um, a lot of the, the basics, which is, which is definitely handy. Um, like, but again, yeah, it's like it's it's mostly no touch. Like they're not going to fix anything, but they might say like, "Hey, this these two drills are too close. You need to, to fix them, or um, your slot is you know too close to the edge or something." Uh, All right, so let's check the ERC. It's good. Let's check. Oh man, uh -oh, I pressed the wrong thing. I gotta wait. Okay, check the DRC. Nothing going on. Grab this, cut, and maybe, where should I put it? I'll put it here. Okay, great. Um, okay, and this time actually you do see there's a lot of errors. This is because this is like a seven mil um, 
antenna. So when I run DRC, it's going to give me all these air wire complaints. So um, for this, you know, my min spacing that I set when I usually work on projects is like eight, min trace 10, min spacing eight. But um, I think GLC PCB has seven mil, seven mil as their rule set. So I'm going to change this to seven. And that'll take care of that. Okay, save this. And remember, you're going to get all those like complaints about these um, uh, traces uh, due to the pasting issue. And you can just ignore those for now. And, and we'll, we'll go back and reload after we do the final PCB, which is the RGB matrix NRF52 Featherwing. If you saw, we recently did a circuit Python core edition for RGB matrices. And of course, you want to plug it into your Bluefruit RGB matrix uh, uh, feather. So we made a little feather wing to make that easy. Do you want a question? Yeah, sure. Okay, this is for everybody, but um, here you go. Mm -hmm. Has anyone found a manufacturer that produced prototype quantities for HDI laser drilling? They're trying to use PCB way for these complicated designs, but not having great experience so far. Yeah, that's tough. Um, I don't know, sorry. Okay, here's another comment. Um, someone likes the buttons on the Adafruit site so they can place orders on DigiKey. That's right. We have many distributors and we have, of course, DigiKey. And you're able to easily and quickly get your products from any distributor. DigiKey happens to be the one that's been helping us out so much. So thank you so much, DigiKey. Um, and then another person says, nice to see you using JLC. I like JLC's Gerber viewer to make sure it's uploaded correctly. They are yeah. much faster than others too. We're gonna do that. We're gonna definitely do that soon. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. Okay. So, okay, we're got we're at a good spot here. I'm just gonna move some things around. I think I like to make it as as compact as as possible. So I just grab the PCBs that I pasted, and I can move them and then make it rectangularated. I think it's pretty close. Okay, so once you've got your panel pretty much where you want it, okay, so save, and then again, quit, and then close all your other Eagle CAD windows. You can also close this and this and this. Uh, so reopen that board file. And this time, the DRC errors will not, you're not going to get the, the same annoying DRC errors. So let's rat nest. Ooh, it says there's one air wire. That's interesting. So let's look at the DRC. Sometimes when things paste, because there's different rules, you know, like you won't, um, uh, the distance, the... Sizes, apply, check. Okay. So this air wire. Yeah, sometimes I get like little, I don't know why, but sometimes we get like little like traces get disappeared, but it's okay. We'll fix it right now. We'll just create a trace. Let's check if that went away. Great. All right, clearances. Um, oh yeah, this is due to the antenna. I'm just going to say this is fine. I think it's within the specifications. This is a weird, um, you know, the, like a big, I put a big, um, the, the pad size for this chip is kind of weird. So to make it, I had to kind of combine multiple pads. So it, it pops up DRC warnings. So I'm just going to approve these. Because remember, whatever you approved in the original design, when you paste it over, you're going to have to reapprove any like weird things that you did. All right, dimensions. Yeah, this is due to this slot, I found out later after I designed this part, a different way of doing slots that isn't as um, noisy on the dimension layer. But for now, I'm just going to click through and approve all of these dimension complaints. Okay, so someone says they needed gold fingers on their PCBs with JCL PCB. It was very economical compared to others, and all three orders came out as expected using just a tick box on the order page. Yeah, there's, they can do not everything. Again, they can't do like, you know, the laser drills, but a lot of 
thing, you know, multiple layers, different colors, you know, if you've got, you know, things that you want, like inner routes, stuff like that, you can do. Okay, keep out, I'm not too worried about these. Overlap, this is my weird antenna, and then this is a drill for the heat, you know, middle of the ground plane. And then I got two stubs, ground stub, that's fine, this is a wire stub. Okay, great, so all my DRCs are fine. Save again, and then I will um, now create the Gerbers. So I actually have a cam that I use. I call it PCB cart nine, even though I use it for everything. Um, not just PCB cart, but it, it, the thing I do is for the silk screen, I don't, I only have T place. I don't put T names. I don't like the names of the people, especially when you're panelizing it, the, the, like the, you know, every capacitor is going to be renamed because Whatever you, if you have C1, when you paste it, now it's going to be like C23. So I just don't bother printing the name of the component. I only just draw the outline and it's cleaner. And then I just print out a stuff sheet on a PDF, you know, from a PDF onto a um, piece of paper. And I use that to reference the locations. Okay, big news. JLCPCB is here in our wow. YouTube channel in the comments. They say hello. Hi. Naomi's here. Yay! And so while JLPCB is here, I want to once again say what I said before. Special thanks to Naomi, um, not only for what she's doing uh, with all her videos and JLPCB, but also for helping us in New York. Um, you know, China got through, or it's getting through, COVID. And they learned a lot, and they did a lot. And, and I'll say, actually, it's interesting. JLCPCB was one of the few companies that was safely operating um, while COVID was shutting down a lot of Chinese PCB fabs. It was, yeah. it was like really impressive. So, you could only get green, but I did order PCBs and I got them. Like, you know, it took a couple extra days, but yeah. I got them. So just want to say thanks, Naomi, and then thanks for um, the PCBs that we needed um, from jail PCB. And uh, anyways, this is cool to see all the, uh, like I said, we didn't plan this. Yeah. We literally said... This is just well, Windows convenient. Let's just do a Sunday night stream. <laughs> it's convenient. And I feel bad because I was going to email Naomi, like, hey, we're going to do the stream. But I'm like, oh, I don't know, time zones and everything. So I'm just, let's just do it. We're doing and it. Then I'll have to send a link later. Now I don't have to do that. Okay. So once we generate the Gerbers, actually you want to hit cancel, which is weird. But like once you're done, you hit cancel. And actually what's funny is I made a mistake on this PCB panel. I know what it is. And I'm going to show you how oh. I catch the mistake. Paul from Pimeroni's here. Yeah. What's going on? I guess I guess everyone's at well, home. What are they going to do? Okay. So yeah. let's. Um, Open up. Okay, so we did our panel. So now I'm logged in. So I'm logged in. My login is M. Jungman because, whoa. Lane from. Uh, That's weird. Why does it look so. Oh, because you have a pink transparency. What? I was like, why does the screen. It's supposed to be green, but it's like bluish. Oh, I guess so. Because the pink is behind oh, it. Oh, Lane from Oshpark's here too. Oh, does it actually think this is like a green screen? I don't know what's going on right that now. I've cool. not seen this happen before. I like this look. Oh, you know what? I know what it is. Yeah, there's this, there's weird layers going on with this green screening thing. Um, if it's okay, is this no, still, is this working for you? That's yeah, fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now I know that it says like this stuff here dimensions. Just ignore that and click quote now. Okay. So now here's what is super fast. The fastest way to do this and the way that I do this is I find my um, okay. So first off, I'm going to delete these like B pound. Boards. Okay, so this is my Gerber. AT Makers is here. Great. So this is my so panel. Oh, here tonight. So you'll want to make sure that you have. It's actually not bad to check this before you submit it. You want um, top layer, bottom layer, bottom overlay, top overlay, top stop, bottom stop, GKO, which is outline, GTP, which you need for the paste layer for the stencil. So if you don't normally generate it, make sure you generate that because otherwise the stent, you know, you want to make sure that your stencil is made by the paste layer, which is not always the same as the stop layer. Um, I don't know if I have any examples here, but um, sometimes, you know, for a ground plane, especially, oh no, I do. So I'll, I'll show later. Um, I have a hatched ground pad. So um, make sure that your paste layer is, is separate. Bottom paste, top paste, and then the drill file. Okay, so Unexpected then Unexpected makers here. Alfaro's here. Yeah, what else are you going to do? Makers, everybody's here. Okay. Nobody's got work tomorrow. Okay, so then well, you drag this file. Literally, you just drag it on. I got work tomorrow. And then you wait. Until it uploads. 
Okay, so give it a second to processing them. And then um, once it's uploaded, it like it's in your files. Okay, so here is um, the Gerbers. So you can actually see like I have like a mistake here. I have some old silk screen file um, that I didn't that I like have here by accident. I think because I, when I made this board, I accidentally um, I I had it was made off of an itsy bitsy and I deleted everything, but I forgot to delete like the fancy silk screen layer. So let's reopen. And this is normal, by the way, whenever I'm sending up prototypes, I go back and forth like three times. Like, I look at the Gerber's rendering and I'm like, oh shoot, you know, I forgot something. Um, so that's because I didn't have my fancy silk screen layers on. So let's turn those on so you can see. Oh, 720, Eagle does not like 720p. It's like, what are you doing? All right, so I can delete Where did it begin? There you go. So delete that. Okay, so there's actually a bottom layer too. Oh, you know what? I think that layer is not. Okay, it's time to actually edit an eagle file by hand. We're gonna do it. Yeah, sorry. So open up X Emacs. <laughs> That's how you do it. And then... Look, this is why everyone's here. This is I Jessica know. Lady This Ava. is a very annoying thing about Eagle CAD sometimes. So you go down to the layer 201. Sorry, you go to the top. And then you scroll down. And 201, I don't know why, but you can't activate it from within Eagle. You have to go here and like type yes. And then reopen the file in Eagle and then you can act and then you can view the layer. I don't know why that you can't activate a layer or I haven't been able to figure out how. Okay. So now I will activate. Yeah. So I can activate this and then I can see this leftover silk screen. Great. So regenerate Gerber's. Overwrite. It says okay, great, cancel, close this out, go back, and then what I do is actually just close this and then I just click quote now again and then I drag this over. And then you do the same processing. Okay, are there any questions while I wait for this to process? Well, I think I may have fixed the chroma key thing. Oh, yeah, great. but you know, one. One thing happens in one spot, one thing is in another. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Emacs, yeah. Uh, so people do like to chroma key. And then. Um, Chroma key was kind of cool. Well, especially now with these PCBs, it would like it would be transparent. So yeah. then once you have your Gerbers and, and they look kind of okay, click on Gerber Viewer. And this takes you to like the big Gerber Viewer. Although, again, 720p, like, turns out computers, they're like, why would you have such a low resolution? So give this a moment. And so far, I actually have used, um, the only thing is it doesn't do the outlines right. So you don't get the individual, you know, the PCBs are outlined in this viewer. But you can, sorry, you have to click. Yeah. Um, but you can see you know, the silk screen and the layout and the pads and how it looks. And um, you can flip it over to so look at the silk screen, like just make sure everything looks right. Um, and you can change like the color and stuff if you want, which is a pretty good estimation. I will say it doesn't show um, the solder, the paste layer, which I kind of wish it did, like in a gray color because I think it's kind of nice to see what your stencil is going to look like, but it's okay. One thing I did notice is um, the OLED feather wing, you see all the components are on the bottom, whereas for the other boards, all the SMT components are on the top. And um, the reason that's a problem is because I want the stencil to be like all the components on one side. I want only one stencil. I don't want to have like two stencils when they're flippy floppy. So I'm going to, um, 
flip this board upside down so that the SMT components are on the top. So I'll go here and then I select this. Select this and then mirror. Grab it and move it. Okay. And then regenerate the grabbers again. Okay. Uh, this is a question for JLPCB. They'll probably answer it. Yeah. But um, you might try to answer it too. Can sure. you specify no gap margin between silk and bare metal, copper, gold for aesthetic reasons? I don't think, you know, for prototype, it's going to be hard to get precision. So you're, you're best off not assuming you'll be able to get it perfect. Like, you'll, you know, you can, you can tell them don't trim, but it's always going to be offset by a bit. Okay, yeah, the, uh, the Paul who said this question for GLPCB says, at the moment, there's always a little uh, resist margin. There's always going to be a little bit. It's going to be tough to not have any. You can put notes in. I mean, you can ask them to. But like you're gonna kind of get what you get, and like I get pretty good registration, but it's definitely like prototype silkscreen qual quality. Uh, you know, that's what you're paying for. It's what you're gonna get. All right, so let's see. This time is a charm. Um, so yeah, so you know, I look at the PCB if I want to go with the Gerber viewer, but I, I'm actually pretty good. So now I can actually start. Um, entering in the rest of the components. Like I do this, I get this perfect, and then I fin fill in the rest. So this is a two layer board, so I keep two layer. Um, if you want to enter in the dimensions, I use inches. Uh, so, you know, I, if, if you start from zero, zero, which I pretty much did, um, this top right corner is about 4.2 by 2.2. So let's put that in. I always go a little bit, you know, higher. Was it 4.2 by 2.2? Yeah, it's about, it's about that. Quantity. Um, you know, 5 or 10, because you get, a, sometimes you get a couple more extra. Um, so I'd say, you know, if it's a prototype that I'm going to give a bunch off to people, um, I'll put down 10, but even 5 is, is quite a bit. PCB thickness, this is in millimeters. Um, chances are you want 1.6. If you have something special, you can do 0.8. Um, I'm assuming that if you do anything other than 0.6, it'll like sometimes add an extra day or two because they have to get other PCBs that are using that thickness into the, you know, the large panel. Um, so I always use 1.6, even if it's an RF board, you know, and I'll, I'll do the first few revisions just to get functionality going at 1.6. And then if it's like, okay, I need to do 0.4, I'll do a separate proto run, you know, cause I need a four layer board or I need like an extra thin board. PCB color. So you can get other colors. Um, but I tend to go with green because I'm impatient, but, um, you can, you know, pay a little bit more and wait a little bit more and you'll get, you know, red or yellow or blue or white or black surface finish. Um, you can get any, but again, it will add some time and it adds expense. Um, so I do it for my final PCBs, but <coughs> I, I don't do it for my prototypes. For my prototypes, I do just lead free. Okay. Question. Mm-hmm. Will you try multiple layers uh, PCB next time? I don't have any multi-layer PCBs to order right now. Okay. Um, when we do, we'll do it. Yeah, cool. I've sort of been able to get away with not having to have a four-layer board for a bit. Even even the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, which everyone was like, it has to be four-layer. It's like, actually, no. <laughs> actually, no. <laughs> actually, no. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, so gold fingers, you know, you can see these are like the they're hardened. Um, gold, they're like usually thicker so that they can, they're durable, they don't etch as much. Uh, the copper weight, usually it's one ounce, two ounce if you're doing like a motor board that needs a heat sink or um, for some other purposes you just need like a lot of current carrying capacity. Um, uh, material details, you're, you're kind of stuck, you have to do FR4. Panel by JLCPCB, say no because you panelized it. Um, so if you want them to panelize, it would be like you sent them one PCB, you know, one like little PCB and you said, okay, you know, panelize this four by three for me, which I have not done. Um, I, I like to panelize myself. Um, so I say no. Flying probe test. So 
I don't know that prototypes are actually electrical tested. I'm going to say that even if they say they do, you should kind of assume that you should do a visual inspection to make sure. Um, you know, even places that do a flying probe test, sometimes for some reason, I don't know, maybe they, they skip the test, they only do a percentage, I don't know. It's not guaranteed. It doesn't guarantee that your PCB is perfect. That's another reason why you always make a bunch of, um, you get like five to ten and then you build them. And then, you know, whichever ones come out. Again, like for the price you're paying, you assume that there's going to be some yield. Castellated holes. These are like the edge holes. Or like if you want a, 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 something that solders onto a PCB, we don't have these. Here's where we do the different designs. So we count the different designs. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then um, remove order number. I do. It's not too expensive. It's just like, a, you know, a couple bucks more. But then you don't have an order number. But it means that the person has to like look at what the PCB is before he or she bags it up for you. Okay, so far, as you can see, we're up to like about 35 bucks or so. Um, I think I did this good so far. Okay, then under advanced options, figure out between PCBs, I actually kind of, you know, for larger PCBs, I like it, but in this case, I don't need it. And then stencil, this is where I order um, that stencil. So I think this is kind of a nice thing because it doesn't it take any... It? No, it can hold it. Well, let's it do a reminder because we haven't been over in a while. Okay. This is a stencil. That's a stencil that I got. So the stencil, you know, you see that this was a panel with, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different designs. And then, you know, I just, I just move the stencil around as I do each PCB and squeegee some paste over and then it's just easier to put together. Okay. Um, Okay, so under framework, no, you don't want a frame you want to open, so you want like a, this is shim metal. Dimensions, um, pick the smallest one that fits, but then what I usually do is click customize size, and then I put down like a little bit more, you know, I, I make it like not much bigger than this. So if I set this to be, you know, one millimeter, so this is, you know, this is approximately, you know, 60 by 100. So I'll just say, okay, make it, you know, 150 by 100 millimeters. Something like that. Give, give yourself some, some boundary around it. Give, you know, give yourself like 25% more on each edge. But the default size is like kind of enormous. It's 300 millimeters by 190 millimeters. It's, it's kind of big. I got a couple questions when you're ready. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, you could not see the stencil graphic in the order the stencil in the order graphic no. and do you have i wish they would add it but they don't you have well to... they're here they're gonna add it oh great like, no i don't know i'm speaking for them but they're watching you live well i hope so okay it'd be great and then next up do you have any special tricks for keeping the stencil aligned um yeah i you know you you have two pieces of plastic or two pcbs and you make a right angle and i'll show how to do that and then you use double-sided tape on everything to keep it down and then you um make a little hinge with a, a piece of Kapton tape. I can kind of show off how I do it sort of Okay. Later. These are good, this is a good tutorial. This okay, good next up, I only video. want the top stencil. I only want one. I don't want electro polishing. I don't need fiducials. And then if you have any notes about the stencil, um, they go into this box here. And then you can um, save it to cart. And then you'll see you get the two things. You get the prototype and then the matching stencil. And then you can check out securely. Now, I'm, I'm obviously not going to go through this because I don't want to type in my credit card number. Right. Uh, but now, that from this on, you just... Well, you, wait. Let's go to this. Well, I don't, I don't want to book this order yet. You don't want to book the order yet. Okay. Yeah. Because I might... Back to this. I have to maybe do some stuff. Okay. Um, but I, uh, basically, from here on out, you would just enter in your, your shipping address, whatever country... Um, shipping method, um, you know, use DHL. I use DHL. I always have pretty good luck with it. And then you submit the order. And then what happens is actually you don't pay. Actually, you don't pay yet. It goes into a review. And then a few hours later, somebody will email you and say, okay, you can now book the order because the PCB passed the inspection. Like sometimes... You know, if you submit something that has four layers of in the Gerber, but you selected two, so they'll say, hey, you know, you probably meant to select four layers. It's more expensive, so the cost is different. Okay, so that's, that's how you order the prototype, and then it shows up a couple of days later, maybe like a week later. So that's good. 
Um, so next I can show really quickly how I do um, the stenciling. So if you have like this PCB and then you have this um, stencil to match. So let's get this lined up. So it's like, it's like that. So what you want to do is um, you'll take, because you get you know five PCBs, right? So you take two PCBs like this, and then you tape these with double-sided tape down. And then you um, put a little piece of double-sided tape underneath here to keep it in place. And then you align the stencil. I don't have tape, so I have to assume this is tape. Oh, there was one. And then you lift it, you know, you squeegee, and then you lift it. And then because these two alignment PCBs are taped down, you can slot another board in, it will be aligned. Because you've created this like jig that's attached to the table through double-sided tape, and this is attached to the jig via this just plain tape that acts as a hinge. Okay, one comment. Uh, you need to specify in the stencil comments to only use your paste layer without changing it. Otherwise, the JL um, CPCB engineers uh, could alter your footprints without notifying you. They do. I do see no. I do see modifications, but I don't mind them. Like as you see, like capacitors, they cut a little yeah. notch out. But it's you know, I figure it just helps avoid um, you know over paste. Maybe I, I've never had a problem. So, um, for example, I do have when I do QFNs, I always cut up the. Um, let's see if I can get. This could you three D print a jig you could but the thickness wouldn't be precise enough okay. you really want it to be exactly the same thickness so that when you squeegee you don't get any weird lumps so using the other pcbs is the trick yeah because they're the exact same thickness um so you can see here like i've got this qfn with a ground plane and i sliced up the ground plane so it only has 50 percent coverage that keeps the qfn from bubbling up so that's something that you define in the paste layer um and ditto for you know i've got this uh through hole um micro USB in this, you know, semi through hole USB C. So you see I have I've defined oval cutouts for um, the slots. So that way when they're pick and placed, um, the the a little bit of paste that gets deposited on the slots and it, and it keeps the slots in you don't have to like through hole solder them. You know, the, the paste sinks into the hole when it's um, the part is pressed in. And then when it's reflowed, it locks it in place. So it's a nice, strong mechanical connection. As you can even see here, like a little bit of paste sinks through. All right, so that, that's it. That's how you can order multiple PCBs. And what's nice is you get them all at once, then you can have a little party, put together all your prototypes, and then uh, you just like repeat it when you find your mistakes. Yeah, um, someone had asked, can you use them for production? And then unexpected maker, says, yeah, so if you know what Tiny Pico is, we know what that is. Um, yeah, so it works depending on your needs. I Yeah, I used JLCPCB for when we had our green builds because I was, you know, again, like nothing else was open and I wanted to get some new designs um, done. I, you know, I basically ordered JLCPCB green because I would get them in a couple days and then, you know, I would have, I would upload the panel. Again, I, I panelize it, not they, uh, not them. But um, every board that I ordered came out exactly right. They did the V-score in the right place, uh, the route outs in the right place, and all the stuff came out good. They were just green because I, you know, they were not offering anything else at the time. Yeah. Now you can get, you know, black, you know, color, green, blue, red, whatever you like. Okay, people like the stencil trick. I'll give a little shout out to Mr. Certainty. Bruce is always delightful. Yay! Um, I was actually I was actually talking about Mr. Certain Certain Night, uh, Bruce. And I was just saying, you know, these last 40 days have been kind of tough because we're doing a lot of uh, work at the factory and it's scary and there's a pandemic and all that. But I said, you know, when I was when I was glancing into the discord, uh, always a nice person and nice soul and helping others. And so, you know, those little things, um, it all adds up and it helps. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Bruce. Um, OK. Uh, everyone uh, really likes the stream, so good Great. work. Great! Yeah. I'm glad this was a stream that we, you know, mean to do for a bit because people always ask, how do you order prototypes? Um, and I do That's change really my style. I, you know, I, yeah, I order from Oshpark sometimes. I order from JLC PCB. I order from Gold Phoenix. Mix around. Give people business all over the place. Okay. 
Um, and then in closing, uh, That's right. don't forget everyone to hang out on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. All 18,000 of us are over there. Um, we thank you. Um, we uh, will not be sitting this close to each other. I have to always say this for whatever reason. The people are like, did that? Did you take this? This was today? not taken today. This was taken six months ago. Yeah. Um, this is just a, a random Friday. Uh, but we thank you because uh, we're trying our best to stay in business. We're paying everyone, um, all contractors, all employees, no cut hours, no furloughing. We're even paying the cleaning service to make sure they're paying everyone. So um, we're not going to stop doing this until uh, we, we have to stop doing it. So thank you so much, everybody, who are buying gift certificates because you can yeah. buy them now and then use them later. You can get Adafruit Plus. You and you can get maybe some of the boards if they come out right. Yeah. Uh, you'll see what is going to be in the store. Get an Adabox. We're going to be shipping soon. Um, tune in this week for main New York City factory footage. You can check it out. Every night we post up chronicles from what's going on here in New York City and more. Um, 3D Hangouts is coming up uh, this Wednesday if you want to uh, see Noam Pedro and do some 3D printing. We got show and tell for a full hour on Wednesday at 8 p.m. and then ask an engineer. Uh, sorry, uh, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. for show and tell and then 8 p.m. on Wednesday for ask an engineer. Uh, John Park has John Park show. And uh, during a lot of these shows, uh, DigiKey and Adafruit have teamed up for a lot of different things. But one of my favorite new segments is I, I NPR. Yeah, good one this week. Yeah, so if you like new products, new product introductions, if you're always refreshing all the different supplier sites and you're like, I want the NPI, I want the NPI, I want the NPI, I want the NPI, I want the NPI. This is where you get it. So. Well, I mean, we came up with the new song. Like, we are, we are new products. On NPI. Yeah. So um, that's everything. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for all Thanks, of the everybody. maker friends that happened to be around on a Sunday night. That was delightful. Um, we're going to go to sleep. It's been a long day. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>